Taylor. Thank you for granting this urgent question, Mr Speaker. Across the country and in this House, there have been considerable concerns about the appointment of Sir Roger Scruton. Well, especially as his views have become more widely known. Can the Secretary of State confirm that as part of the appointment process for Sir Roger, that he was made aware of his previously expressed views? If he was, what consideration did the Secretary of State give to these views as to his suitability to take up such an important post? And if he wasn't, is he not just a little bit embarrassed that due process wasn't followed? Can the Secretary... Order, 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 order. Mr Bacon, you're normally a most civilised and urbane fellow. I can't imagine what's got into you. We are, and I know you know all about building and houses and and you can dilate on these matters with great eloquence and at any length specified. We're going to hear from you uh, long, but if you... Of course it's excellent, excellent for you, and no, no, excellent for the House, excellent for Norfolk, excellent for the nation. But you, in the meantime, you should exercise just a degree of patience and entertain the possibility that somebody might express a view, legitimately, that differs from your own. Mr Andrew Gwynne. Uh, can the Secretary of State confirm whether the Nolan principles apply to this post? Does the Secretary of State consider the views Sir Roger has expressed as being appropriate for the post of Chair of this Commission? Now, the primary focus of the Building Better, Building Beautiful Commission is to seek to address how new settlements can be developed with greater community consent. We support this aim, which is why we've launched our own planning commission. But communities, communities are more than just bricks and mortar and planning processes. They are about people people from diverse backgrounds, and good planning should foster good community cohesion. When was the Secretary of State made aware of Sir Roger's comments that homosexuality is not normal, and comparing homosexuality to incest? When was he aware that Sir Roger had complained that gay men have an obsession with the young? Will he now apologise to the LGBTQ plus community for appointing a man that holds these views? When was he made aware of Sir Roger's links to far-right organisations and his propagation of their anti-Semitic conspiracy theories? Was he aware that his new chair spoke out against the disbanding of Vlaams Block by Belgian courts after being found of inciting racial discrimination, dismissing it as a conspiracy by the Liberal establishment? Is this acceptable in the Secretary of State's view? When was the Secretary of State made aware that Sir Roger heaped praise on Hungary's Viktor Orban at the height of his truly hateful, state-orchestrated, anti-Semitic campaign against George Soros and stated in a lecture in Hungary that Jewish intelligentsia formed part of a Soros empire? And we know from reports today, Mr Speaker, in the Huffington Post, that Sir Roger Scruton spoke favourably of the National Front, calling it an egalitarian movement. Is this acceptable in the Secretary of State's eyes? Given this, is the Secretary of State still prepared to speak alongside Sir Roger at an event on Wednesday? If we are going to have a society which welcomes free speech, we should also hold those people to account for what they use this privilege to say. We should not consider the, the views of these people because it's the views of the people who are left silent by the propagation of hateful rhetoric and views that should have no place in the 20th cent 21st century, let alone be rewarded by a senior government appointment. I want the Secretary of State to confirm to this House that he has confidence in Sir Roger and the views he holds so that we can go forwards knowing that this Secretary of State thinks that these views are acceptable for the Chair of this Commission. Yeah.